the wetlands to the east of Kolkata, shock absorbers for all activities of city life. A unique example of man-made and man-managed wetlands. Where the untreated sewage of the city is utilized extensively for fish culture. Treating the wastewater from the city in these wetlands saves Kolkata from constructing and maintaining a wastewater treatment plant. The wetlands are largely human-made, comprising of intertidal marshes with significant wastewater treatment areas like sewage farms, settling ponds, oxidation basins. Successfully managed by the local fishermen for the past 100 years, East Calcutta wetlands has been designated as a Ramsar site in November 2002. Wetlands in West Bengal cover more than 150 beels and brackish water bhairis and constitute about 31% of the total freshwater resources of the state. The history of the East Calcutta wetlands reveals that Major William Tolly, chief engineer, was permitted to excavate the Tolly's Nala for the transportation of goods for commerce from the hinterland of Bengal. Tolly's Nala was finished in 1776 connecting Biddadhori at Shamukpota and the river Hooghly near Hastings. As the city began to grow faster, the British authorities started to engineer an advanced drainage system. In 1810, the Belighatta Canal was excavated and in 1829, Circular Canal was dug. During the period of the East India Company, the right of fisheries here had gone to some rich, powerful and influential local families. The sewage-fed fisheries were earlier saltwater fisheries. In 1860, a health officer of the Calcutta Corporation started sewage farming. And in 1930, regulated proportions of sewage water began to be used in Bhangor, Tiljala, Jadavpur and Shonarpur fisheries. In the case of the East Kolkata wetlands, the raw wastewater sometimes directly enters into the bhedis and produces fish for human consumption. The suggestive model is that the wastewater should pass through a water hyacinth tank where some amount of heavy metals and suspended solids may be absorbed from the wastewater before this water is allowed to enter into the fish ponds. The nutrients present in the water are used for aquaculture. The wastewater may also be used for plantation and livestock farming. The East Kolkata wetlands and the waste recycling region absorb and treat the huge volume of sewage and waste water and urban solid and air wastes generated by Kolkata in the most efficient, economical and natural way at no cost to the city. It substantially fulfills the requirement of fish vegetables and food grains in the city.
It absorbs the pollution and purifies the air that the citizens breathe. They provide a habitat for a variety of flora and fauna and living organisms endemic to wetlands. They provide livelihood support to thousands of local villagers who also have the unique skill of using wastewater to grow fish and vegetables. The involvement of women of the fishing community in integrated farming efforts needs to be encouraged. This would enhance their economic stability as well as their dignity and social status. Rearing ducks, poultry, pigs, dairy and goat farming were started along with the fish culture in the waste-fed zone of Kolkata. Dyke cultivation is also a part of integrated farming. Lotus farming inside the fish culture ponds has high economic importance. Where the canal bed and the adjacent area are not suitable for plantation, different types of animal fodder crops are grown. Fodder crops absorb some amounts of pollutants from the wastewater and so it has an added economic and ecological value. These crops need little care and create new market opportunities for the local people. Only a few years back, sewage-fed fisheries, especially on the eastern side of Kolkata, used to be a good source of fishes. But at present, the estimated area has come down to 1,471.92 hectares only. Many of these areas are also under the threat of urbanization. These sewage-fed watered areas should be handed over to the fishery cooperatives to stop illegal filling. Fishery cooperatives are doing their best in respect of fish production. The SFDC Limited also possesses a good number of water bodies and is achieving good production. Despite its success over the years, the wetlands of East Kolkata face some critical problems. Because of the non-functioning of the Bantola sedimentation project, raw sewage is entering directly into the tanks, creating major pollution problems in sewage-fed fisheries. Owing to the shrinkage of sewage-fed water areas, the supply of water has become a great problem because heavy siltation pond beds have become higher than that of the main canal, it restricts the entry of water. For immediate development of these water areas, an ideal canal system should be created. Sedimentation tanks with giant wheels should be provided. Depth should be increased by proper desilting to increase the volume of the water body. Training has been imparted to the local fishermen to adopt better sustainable technology with the integration of ITK or Indigenous Technology Knowledge. There are nine fishermen cooperatives and 30 fish production groups which successfully operate under the guidance of the fisheries department, giving social and economic security 
to thousands of families in the region. It is primarily due to these societies and the fish production groups that the East Kolkata wetlands have been saved from the clutch of the realtors. <laughs>